how are you today? Today I'm going to tell a story about a uh, fish. And it, actually, the story is actually part fish and part moon. And um, today is stories in the sky. So the moon part is the sky part. So did you ever go outside at night and look at the moon and watch it change from night to night? Yeah, sometimes you go out and you see a great big giant circle of a moon. And sometimes you go out at night and you'll just see just a little tiny crescent moon. And maybe a, the next night or a couple nights later, it looks like it's almost half. Well, those are called phases of the moon. And the phase of the moon that we're going to tell the story about is the full moon. And a full moon happens when the, su the side that's facing Earth is fully lit by the sun. And it happens once a month because that's how long it takes the moon to orbit or go around the Earth. So full moons happen once a month. And did you know that each one of those full moons have a name? Native American tribes have named all of the full moons, and so each month has a different name. Like in January, it's the, it's the howling wolf moon. Because on cold nights, I think maybe you could hear some wolves howling in the distance. And cold nights, sound travels really, really far. So January was the full moon and it was the wolf moon. And then of course, you know, another example is, is the moon in June. It's called the strawberry moon, and that's when the strawberries are ripe and you can pick them. So it's all, it's all, August is, is here, and it's almost over. But the full moon for August is called the sturgeon moon. And sturgeon is a fish, a, stu a fish that lives in the Great Lakes. And that's the fish part of our story. We're going to tell a big fish story today. And sturgeons are great big fish. They can reach in, in, our, in our lakes um, here around Michigan. They can reach up to about five feet long, and that's about as tall as I am. That's really big, and they can weigh up to about 80 pounds. That's a big fish. <laughs> They're bottom feeders, and they've been around actually since the dinosaurs. Their, their fossil record hasn't changed since the dinosaurs. So we think that sturgeon have been around since there's been dinosaurs on earth. Now sturgeons, you know, like I said, they're pretty big fish. They can live up to, you know, 65, 90, and they've even found some that were maybe almost 150 years old. So wow, that's pretty, <laughs> that's a pretty long life for a fish. So, the August moon is the sturgeon moon because that's when you could actually catch a lot of sturgeon if you were trying to feed yourself and your family. And that's what our story today is about, about um, Soaring Eagle and Nana Buju and how they caught a lot of fish and what happened after that. So we're going to get started on that story which is here on my tabletop, and here we go. Okay, well, our book today is called Nana Buju, Soaring Eagle, and the Great Sturgeon. And it is by Joe McClellan. So here we go. Long, long ago, in the fall of the year, Nana Buju and his good friend Soaring Eagle were preparing to go to their winter camps. And they had just finished fishing. And they caught a lot of fish for the whole winter. And they were drying all their fish on a rack. They had enough for they had enough fish for the whole winter, and they were working hard together hanging their fish upside down on racks to dry. So there we go. And then winter came. 
and the lake froze and Nana Buju took off and Nana Buju took off to his winter camp with all of the fish. He took his share and Soaring Eagle's share too. Oh no, what will, what will happen to us? What will happen to us now, asked Soaring Eagle. I haven't any fish to feed my family. That evening, as they sat starving in their wigwams, they heard footsteps outside, crunching in the snow. Someone cried out, Soaring Eagle, Soaring Eagle, you're invited to a feast. And Soaring Eagle took a bowl and left the wigwam to find the feast. And he entered every wigwam in his village and he couldn't find the feast. So he went home and he told his wife that he had failed. She and their children wept because they were hungry. They all went to bed and they woke up hungry. And as night came again, they heard the same footsteps crunching in the snow. And the same voice cried out, Soaring Eagle, Soaring Eagle, you're invited to a feast. And he quickly took his bowl and he ran out of the wigwam and in the distance, he could see a man. He followed him past all of the wigwams in the village over the falls. And when he found, then he found a large feast and many manitou. And those are spirits. So this is a really interesting page, I think. He went to the feast. But check out the pictures. The man in the middle <laughs> has a shadow of a deer. And the lady next to him has a shadow of a fox. And the lady next to her has the shadow of a porcupine. So they're really, Soaring Eagle found some animal spirits. They teased him and laughed and joked and they fed him and they gave him food to take home to feed his family. As they were leaving, the trout spirit spoke to him. We know about the trick that Nana Buju played on you and your family. We will tell you how to get some food and to feed them and because we feel sorry for you. Tomorrow, this is what you do. Have your wife make some twine while you cut a big hole in the ice. And then when this is done, tie your oldest child by the foot with the twine that your wife has made and lower him into the hole. When he reaches the bottom of the lake, he will catch some trout and then you can pull him out. As soon as you have enough fish to live on for the winter, stop fishing. Megwitch, thank you, trout brother, said Soaring Eagle, and he went home to tell his wife. So that's what they did. She made some twine and he tied it to his son and he lowered him into the water under the ice. And after he pulled his child out of the water the first time, he had a lot of fish. I'll do this all day and get many, many fish, he said. Toward evening, he had more trout than his family could eat in three winters. But Soaring Eagle just got greedier and greedier. And as he kept on fishing with his son, he felt weaker and weaker, and his son felt heavier and heavier, and all of a sudden he could hardly pull him out of the hole in the lake. And then the twine broke. Oh no, cried Soaring Eagle. I have lost my son through my own greed. That night, Trout came to him in his dreams. Soaring Eagle, you have angered the great sturgeon and he has taken your son because you took too many fish from the lake. 
you must go to him under the ice if you ever want to see your boy again. The next morning, Soaring Eagle opened the hole in the ice and lowered himself to the floor of the lake and set off to find the great sturgeon. An otter swam up to him and led the way to where the great sturgeon lived. The great sturgeon lived. There's the otter. We're going to find the great sturgeon. Whoa, there he is. Great sturgeon was huge, and Soaring Eagle was terrified. I have taken your son because you have caught too many fish, said the great sturgeon. Let this be a lesson to you. Take only what you need. With those words, great sturgeon returned the boy to Soaring Eagle, and the otter led them back to the hole in the ice. And there they are. Soaring Eagle gave Otter the extra fish. He also told Otter where Nana Buju's camp was so that Otter could play a trick and steal some fish from Nana Buju for that trick that he played on him. And that is the end of the story. So everyone's back together, trying to get warm. <laughs> and that's the story of the great sturgeon and Soaring Eagle and Nana Buju and how <laughs> they had too many fish. So I was thinking about that story and I thought, oh, you know, fish can breathe underwater, but people can't. And I think that was sort of a magical story because everybody went under the water and it looks like they could breathe just fine. But in real life, people can't breathe in water just fish. And so I thought I'd do a little demonstration on how fish breathe underwater. Well, people have lungs, right? And you can take a deep breath and fill your lungs with the air. But fish, they breathe differently. They have gills. So we're going to pretend to make some gills and show how fish catch the oxygen in the water. So first we need um, a little container and we're going to use a piece of fabric to pretend it's the fish gills. Now fish gills are really, really thin membranes inside the head of the fish. And as the fish open their mouth and draw the water through their mouth over the gills, the gills catch the oxygen particles that are in the water, or the oxygen molecules, little tiny particles. So here's my water, but it's clear. So to pretend that we are catching oxygen, I have a little bag of coffee, and coffee is very tiny little black particles. So I'm taking a spoon, and I'm going to put a little bit of coffee in my water. And pretend that that's oxygen. So now you can see, oh boy, I've got some little brown particles in my water. So what's going to happen if I, I have some fabric there, but I also have a coffee filter. And I'm going to use that first to pretend that the coffee filter is the gills. And then I'm going to use the fabric. So let's see if I can catch some oxygen, just like fish catch oxygen with their gills. Whoa, I think I did. It fell a little bit, but if you can take a look at my coffee filter, I've caught a lot of little coffee particles, just like oxygen molecules being caught by thin membranes of the gills, of inside the gills of the fish. So there we go. That's pretty cool. So why can't fish breathe in air? That's a good question too. So I am going to put a little bit of water in here. And now it's full of coffee. <laughs> it's okay. And I'm going to pretend that my fabric is some gills. And I'm going to stick it into the water. And it kind of floats around on the water. And you can see it. But when I pull it out into the air, 
it sticks to each other and it collapses. Can you see that? I have to pull that membrane apart. So with the gills collapsing, when they're not floating around in water, having water run over them when the fish tries to breathe, they're all stuck together and they can't absorb as much oxygen. So that's just a little demonstration on how fish can breathe with the gills. The gills trap the oxygen molecules. So, <laughs> yep, I'm gonna put that demonstration away. And we are going to do a kind of a fun craft, I think, about fish. And I'm gonna put this down. And if you saw our promo today, one of the things that you're gonna need is a white sheet of paper. Whoa, that fills my whole screen, doesn't it? Okay, a whole sheet of paper, a bag that, I, that onions came in, you know how it's mesh and kind of stretchy. We're gonna use one of those. We're gonna use some aluminum foil. And we're gonna use some, a pencil and some paint brushes. And I also have about three or four different colors of paint. So let's get started. The first thing I wanna do is make a picture of water because my fish that we're gonna make swim in the water. So here's my great big white sheet of paper. And let's see, what color should I make the water? I think I'm gonna do blue and green. So I'm gonna take my blue paint and a little bit of my brush and I'm gonna make my page look like water. So first I'm gonna start with blue and I'm just making little dabs of blue all over the paper and Next, I'm going to fold that paper and smush it around and see what it looks like. Okay, so I've done this before for Get Crafty and you kind of swirl and smush and swirl and smush. And then when you open it up, you see what you get. Ooh, whoa, I need some more water. You get lighter ones. And I'm going to put some more blue over here. Lots more blue paint. Lots more. Okay, I'm going to smush that again. And see if I can really, really spread that out a lot more. So there's dark spots and wavy spots. So if you were underwater and looking what it looks like underwater, what would you see? What would the water look like to you? Here we go. Oh, it's getting here. <laughs> Whoa, it's very, very watery, I think. So I want it to look sort of multicolored. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of green over here. Green and blue, because, you know, when the light hits the water, you see lots of different colors and things from the top side. This is looking really watery and fishy, I think. So I got a lot of green and blue over here. And I'm gonna put that down. We're gonna smush it again. So here we go. Lots and lots of smushy green, I hope. Yep, let's find out what that looks like. Oh, <laughs> I got some on my hand. You know, that's one thing about doing crafts. You get kind of messy, but that's okay. Let's see what it looks like on the inside. Ooh, cool. So that's pretty watery looking, I think. Pretty wavy and pretty watery looking. Ooh, it's reflecting. There we go. Whoa, it looks, <laughs> I look like I have two eyes. I don't want that right now. I'm going to kind of do some finger paint to make it look a little bit more wavy. Yeah. Okay, so that's looking pretty watery and wavy. I like that. I'll get the reflection off of it. Okay, so now we've got that going on. What we're going to do is set that aside just a little bit and work on making some fish to put on it. So I am going to 
set it aside to dry. And I'm going to get out my aluminum foil. So, how am I going to make some fish to put on my picture? I'm going to take my pencil and draw a, <laughs> draw a fish on my aluminum foil. And I just drew a mouth and then I drew a tail. And then I'm going to go around. There we go. And I think I'll draw another one while I'm working on it. So here we go. Over here, I think. So we'll draw a mouth and a big head and a tail. And around here. So there we go. So I have two fish that I've drawn on the page. Now that's a little bit reflective. So it's probably going to be a little bit hard to see on camera until I start cutting out the fish. So let's do that. Let's see what I've got here. So I'm cutting the foil on the marks that I made with my pencil. And I'm cutting out a foil fish. Okay, so his mouth, around his body, and out to the tail. There, got a fish. Maybe that's the great sturgeon. <laughs> so my other fish is over here. I'm going to cut him out too. And make the tail. I'm going to put that down. Put my foil over there. Whoops, my fish didn't turn out to have a mouth with this one. So let's see, where is the mouth? There it is. There we go. Okay, so I have two fish. Now the fish are going to have some great looking color on them. Now I can either paint them, <clears throat> which you can, or you can use some markers too. And so I'm going to do a little bit of mark on my fish. But first, I'm going to take that onion bag and give them some scales. That's what I've got the onion bag for. So that onion bag I put down, and the fish I put on top of it. And now I'm going to take and rub them with my finger and give them some scales. I wonder if you can see that up close. There you go. See how the, it's rough? Yeah, the onion bag is the texture of the fish's scales. There you go. Okay, so now that I have a scaly fish, I'm going to give him some color. I'm going to take my marker and maybe he's going to have a red belly. And then maybe he's going to have, maybe he's a sunfish. He's going to have a little orange on him. Maybe a little blue and green. I like those colors. He's going to really be a colorful, colorful fish. And an eye. Oops. I'm going to give him an eye in a second or two. Here's a little blue. So he really turned out pretty colorful. Okay. Big fish. There. Now we have a lot of light reflecting, but you can see he's really colorful. And I'm going to put some scales back on him because when I did the marker, some of those scales are off. There we go. So I can do another fish too by adding some color. Might even have more color than the first fish. This one's just going to be blue and green. I like those colors. Maybe I'll give him a red eye. There he is. Okay. 
And you need some scales too. I'm gonna rub them onto the onion bag. Get it with the marker. Because he's a little wet, you have to wait till he dries. <laughs> you do it with your finger, you get it all over your hands. But he's got scales too. Now, back to my wonderful painting that I squished and smushed. And we're gonna put these fish in the water. Okay. There we go. There it is. My water and my fish. Now if your painting is dry, you can stick them on with a glue stick or some glue. But my painting is still wet. So there's my fish over here. So I can stick my fish to the wet paint <laughs> and they'll stay. So there we go. Fish underneath the water. There we go. And that <laughs> is our big fish story today in our big fish craft. And a little lesson on how fish breathe. And we're glad you joined us today. And I'm switching cameras back to say goodbye. <laughs> So go out and the next, the next full moon you see is going to be in September. Sometimes they call that one the corn moon because the corn is ripe at that time. But I'm going to challenge you to make up your own name for the next full moon. So have a good day. Thanks for joining us for story time. All right. Thanks for everybody. For for tuning in. Hope you guys had fun with that story and those crafts. If you do come up with a, an idea for a moon name, then uh, go ahead and send it to us. We're on social media and you can check out our website, www.greatlakeskids.org. And if you want to join us live for these programs like uh, Stories in the Sky, Let's Create a Story, just go to that same website and click on the offerings and you'll see all of our programs right there. We do these programs live at 11 o'clock every uh, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. On Tuesdays, we do Get Crafty, so we're doing arts and crafts together. That's a hands-on program. Uh, we are always telling stories on Thursday and doing something hands-on together, and often we need your help and input and to uh, create those stories, and we ask you about the ending, so join us for those. And on Fridays, we're doing First Step Science. So we're creating scientific tools and learning how to use them and discovering new things about our world. So. I hope that you can join us for all of those. They're all at 11 o'clock. They're all free right now and they're all live. And so all you gotta do is go to that website. If you're interested in keeping programming like this on the air and helping out the Children's Museum, you can donate by going to www.greatlakeskids.org slash donate. And there's information on how to donate right there, including a link. So um, feel free to check that out. And we always appreciate any donations that you're able to give. Again, we hope that you had fun today and we hope that you join us next time. And until then, we'll say goodbye. Bye. Bye.